Good old Frederick. At Doug's house. At my house. At Doug's house. I see the ukulele yep. on the back. Yeah, just chilling. Is it a ukulele? Yeah, man. This is actually... Uh, there's a guitar over here. This is like a small travel size uh, Martin guitar that's kind of my go-to for just sitting around and, you know, sometimes... Yeah. Sometimes saying it with words ain't enough. <laughs> Sometimes you got to sing it. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Yeah, man, I love, I love music. I've been playing. I've been playing music for a long time. Is your? Do you play guitar too? I see one there. That's your buddies. I am not musically inclined. That is all my buddies. He's got a little travel one down there as well, right. actually, but not me. No. Not you. Yeah. Not so I. How, how did you get in? How did you get involved with Trade Hounds, man? How did you get started with that company? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you guys a little backstory on on myself. Is I was in digital marketing for the last six years, living the agency life. Okay. So it was it was kind of a grind, just being on an account manager side of things. But the primary account that I worked on uh, at my last job was Stanley Black and Decker. So I was working with Dewalt. Okay. Irwin, Lennox, and Craftsman, um, all sub brands under that Stanley Black and Decker family of brands. And through those conversations with DeWalt, actually, I was kind of looking for other channels just because Facebook and Instagram weren't performing as well as we wanted them to uh, in terms of reaching the right audience. So okay. I, I kind of looked at reaching out via some non traditional channels. And through those kind of like research, tactics I was going through, good old Google, <laughs> on trade hounds, and I reached out to our CEO, Dave, and through those conversations of trying to get DeWalt signed on, Dave was like, he's Australian, he's like, hey, mate, like, we'd love to have you come on as a sales rep. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to give this a go, and I know uh, we were talking down in, in Austin, oh. it was kind of just like a time for me to try something new, and, and I believed in the company, I believed in their mission. So I switched over to from digital marketing to, to the sales side of things with trade downs. How long ago was that? Uh, I started in August. Oh wow! So <clears throat> it's fresh, fresh. Yep, very fresh. fresh. I worked with the wall for a while, so I've been I've been privy to yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt. But it was it was a nice change. It's been fun. So with the com with, so for those people who don't know. For anybody out there who doesn't know Trade Hounds as an app uh, or as a place that you can go, can you let the audience know what is Trade Hounds and, and what's you guys' mission? Yeah, that was probably a, a good place for me to start, even though we talked about me. That's that's easy, but Trade Hounds is a, a free app that you can download on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And essentially what it is, it's a community for professional tradespeople only. And um, we, we do a great job okay. of showcasing, uh, you know, tr professional tradespeople uh, in a feed format. And you're able to kind of brag about yourself a little bit and ask for advice. That's, that's my favorite part about the community is, is the social aspect to it. Um, and showcasing your craft and asking yeah. for advice, especially for the younger apprentice level guys who are in the community. They'll, they'll post their first job and say, okay. hey, like, what can I do better? And the more senior, you know, okay. master level users are going to go in and say, hey, like, there's no bashing, but it's, you can do this a little bit better. So, okay. Trade Hounds is just this professional community that's, that's free to download on, on both Google and the Apple App Store. So, if you haven't already, go check it out yourself. It's, it's a cool app. Yeah, I downloaded it when, uh, when we first talked to you in Austin. And um, was just kind of comparing it, you know, in my own mind to the the apps that exist now where you can go, whether it's Instagram, it's TikTok, it's Facebook, whatever the case may be. And I noticed a few differences in Trade Hounds than those other places. Can you talk about what sets that app apart from just – because I know a lot of people might say, well, I've already got – I'm already on Instagram. What do I got? I'm going to do another app. So what sets Trade Hounds apart? Yeah, so when, when you're on Trade Hounds, uh, it, it does look like an Instagram. I might get in trouble for saying that with, with my CEO, but it does look like Instagram. But the difference is it's, it's professional content. So when you're on Instagram, like yeah. I'm looking at skiing videos. I'm looking at surfing videos. When you're looking at Instagram, you might be looking yeah. at music videos. 
when you're on trade downs, you're you're looking for that professional content, and you're looking for advice. Yeah. Um, the other feature that um, okay. I'm not sure if, if you took a look at was our transparent pay feature, where you can go in and input your pay to say, you know, I'm a journeyman electrician oh, right. in, in Frederick, Maryland. Here's what I'm making in an hourly uh, in terms of wages. And then it's going to give you a range of what other users in the area are making. So you can go in and talk to your boss and be like, hey, actually, hmm. based on data, I'm getting underpaid and get, get raises. So that's kind of how we differentiate ourselves. How, what kind of what kind of feedback have you gotten on that element of the app? Has it been mostly positive feedback? Yeah, we've got tons of great feedback in, in real user stories where they've gone in and said, okay. because I showed this data to my boss, I, I got a raise of X amount of dollars, which led to Y amount over the year. And it's almost it's like $40,000. It's a big deal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is a big deal. <clears throat> are you seeing, are you getting any responses on the business owner side of things where they're like, hey, guys, <laughs> knock it off. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd have to talk to my community manager, but uh, I talked to my buddy. The thing is, we want to bring power to the people. And, and that's where, you know, we're getting the yeah. actual skilled trades people and not management. We understand, like, that might not be the best thing that yeah. a, a company wants to see, but it's the best for the worker. And um, he, the guy right. I was talking to was like, you yeah. know, this is good from a poaching perspective, too, from a, from a, a management perspective. It's like, I can go and say, hey, I'll pay you more for some quality workers, which, which also is useful. But his gut, gut reaction wasn't the best. Yeah, for sure. What did you like about the app? <laughs> That's hilarious. You mentioned uh, that there's, yeah. You, well, you mentioned that there's no bashing when people are talking about uh, criti criticisms and learning and stuff. How do you guys mitigate that? I mean, how is that monitored to make sure? Is that just you, you just hope for a positive culture, or is there is there oversight? How does that work? Yeah, that's a good question, and there's there hasn't been real oversight. Uh, we flagged a couple of users where you can get reported, but that has been few and far between. Right it's, it's all been self-managed within the community, okay. which is fantastic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because nothing makes us happier than seeing poor work and letting somebody know. <laughs> 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 nothing makes an electrician with 20 years of experience happier than being like, oh, look, give me the keyboard right Yeah, now. I, you know, Doug, Doug knows that... <laughs> One of my biggest pet peeves is traditional message boards for this stuff because you go yeah. on, you wanna you know you wanna ask a question, and the the first answer is maybe somewhat helpful, and then it's twenty five people chiming in <laughs> to just like you know trash somebody. That's not how I've been doing this thirty five yeah. years. Let me I, tell you what I do. I had one guy actually copy and paste a section out of the code book like it was some kind of mic drop. But it was like six cycles ago, and so it's twenty-year-old information. Yeah. It's just like, you know, they're just they're painful. Yeah, yeah. We we haven't seen too much of that. It's been like, hey, this is really good, good but here's where you can improve. Yeah. And we're working right now cool. on a blog. Again, I don't know if I can tell you guys the stuff, but we're working on a blog right now to kind of compile those resources and encourage those conversations. Okay. Like, Essentially, that's that's what we do. We're that that's platform genius. to have that that chat and be able to reach out to someone. I think okay, it's great. I know this is probably not right, and you can take that off like the public board too. It can be a private message, which is nice. Okay, uh, but well, we've seen great, yeah. great engagement in the community there. I think it's a great thing to to attempt to facilitate because, on the one hand, it teaches young people to be vulnerable enough in a space where they feel like maybe they, they're supposed to be vulnerable and, and put their work out there to get critique. And it also can be a space where we can work to teach those of us in leadership positions through critique and criticism too, that like, hey, maybe don't call him. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can swear on this show? I didn't know that. Shit, man. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably bleep it out. <laughs> it's no, but it's it's a good thing I think on both ends to encourage that sort of back and forth. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. 
Um, so I guess, what did you guys think of the app? You've, you've been in it. I know we talked in Austin a couple sure. of weeks ago. What did you guys so, think? So the things I saw, the things I saw that I liked that I thought set it apart from your standard um, other social media platform apps was that it's more engaging to specifically the trade, like um, the people in the trades. You, there are when you're scrolling through, you're not just it's not just image after image, but they get that if the image get, it gets broken up or the image scroll gets broken up with questions. Um, how far along are you in the process? What is it that you're looking for? And then I, right away when you jump into the app, there are these um, you guys do a lot of giveaways. So you're you're encouraging people to post content through. I saw the one today it was the best tip. Give us your best tip and trick. Best trick of the trade that you know, and get entered to win a you know, five hundred dollar Dewalt, Dewalt prize pack. And I think that's a great, that's the thing that you won't get. I mean, you might get that from a a company through Instagram or from you know right. like a team like us yeah, that doing a giveaway or something. But yeah. um, to have a platform where I think that, that I think it's cool what you guys are doing because it's important. It's important for us to all all yeah. have a space where we can go grow and learn together and get rewarded for. It's, it's scary. Look, even Josh and I talk about this all the time. It's like I, I did a video yesterday. I was doing a simple ceiling fan uh, replacement in an old house, and I time-lapsed the whole thing, and it looks really cool. But at the end of it, there's that sometimes you'll have that slight gap around the upper edge where the canopy meets the ceiling, and it's not bad. It's how the fan by the manufacturer is installed based on the bracket. But I didn't like the way that looked, so I didn't I – didn't, <laughs> I didn't post that video just because of that minor indiscrepancy, and a lot of us are like that, where we're just like, nah, I'm not about to put that out there. I'm going to get eaten alive. But yeah. there's a little gap up there at the top, you know what I mean? And, and, and they're right. So there's, we're always kind of, uh, you know, there, there was a person I was working for recently, a friend of ours that I was working for recently, and um, you almost want to have the conversation of like, hey, don't, hey, don't post, don't post anything, because you just never know what's you almost want to curate that yourself because we know, like we were having a conversation with a guy when we were in Nika, uh, Kyle Figueroa, who's a friend and a colleague. And Kyle was talking about how, like, he 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 was working with um, a couple tool companies down at Nika, and they wanted him to do a video. And we talked about this on a previous episode. They wanted him to do a video about a specific tool they were marketing. And he said he couldn't. And they were like, what do you mean you can't? You know, we brought you down here effectively, like what you know. And he he said, "Look, it's not that easy. Like I'm in a community of people who watch and respect my work, and if I don't believe right. in a tool, I can't go out here and say, check this tool out because I'm gonna get eaten alive.' <laughs> so oh, it's it's 100%. cool that you guys are facilitating this this space where you know the idea is that even if your work's not quite there. The idea is to post it and say, "Well, what could I do? What would you do?" Yeah, yeah you, you know. took the words yeah. right out of my mouth. I was going to say, "Did you post it in Trade Hounds?" Because I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to start posting things to Trade Hounds once. Uh, see, see what the reaction is. Yeah, I mean, perfect. Video. I, I've been doing this 17 years, and I, I still, I still hesitate to post things. Um, just, I, I think it's tricky because there's, there's the. Uh, the intent to learn from somebody, but I feel like most people traditionally posting things, it's because they're not looking to learn something. It's because they're proud of what they did. Right. And so they're not usually that open to the learning. Right. Um, yeah. They don't want the criticism. Yeah, right. So it's, it's cool because it's a completely different uh, mentality of posting, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you can, you can have that level of pride, but also wanting to learn. Like, I'm sure, you know, you've been in this for 17 yeah. years, but, like, there's still new things happening all the time where you're like, oh, I didn't know that. But I think that's just being human. Dude, every, every day. Every day. Right. Every day. That's yeah. being human. That's every day. And I feel like, it, you know, if you if you keep if you keep getting yourself out there and try, you know, moving in new directions, taking on projects you've never done before, it's all yeah. about learning. It's yeah. all about learning. And I, I would even say for somebody like Josh, who's 17 years in, it's it's almost more... I, I would feel more comfortable as a first year apprentice posting something because you're the new guy. You're the new guy, and if you don't, right. if you didn't get it right, well then, okay. I, what do you expect from me? 
Yeah. But if you've been doing it 17 years. Yeah. Talking, talking to my wife about her work, she reached a point, she was like three years in, and she's like, I was like, well, you know, how's work going? She's like, well, it's, it's kind of a bummer because I still feel like I don't, I'm, I still feel like I'm the new guy, but the new guy uh, status has worn off on me, and so people don't look at me that way anymore. Right. But yeah, there really is this like grace period. Whew. Yeah. I feel like the new guy every day. I do every day. I mean, since we started a company, since we started being, it's just you too, huh? I'm sure. It's just like, but that's the space where you learn the most. That's the space yeah. where you grow the most when you're uncomfortable. If you're walking around only doing the thing you know how to do over and over, I don't Have know, you you're probably the, not growing uh, too much. I think it's a video from, I believe it's a rabbi, and he talks about how we're, we're very similar to lobsters. And in the yeah. fact where they need to, I used to be a lobsterman, so this, tie, this ties home to me as well, but... Um, I thought that mustache looked that must, I thought your mustache looked like it had some sort of lobster background. You'd be a from Boston. Yeah, salty crew, man. You know it. But he <laughs> talks about, he talks about um, how lobsters need to shed their shell to be able to grow. And that's mm. when they're most vulnerable. And that's when yeah. it's like you get out of your comfort zone. That's the only way that you grow. So I, I think that's just a real... If you haven't watched the video, watch yeah. it. But it's a great analogy to be like... It's scary okay. to go and try something new, like jumping yeah. from marketing to sales or taking on a job that you haven't already. But like that's how you learn and get yeah. better, and like it's about changing the mindset, really. For sure, I mean, mindset is is so important in every everything you do. That's almost all we freaking talk about, too. Is just because <laughs> like, yeah. you can be good at what you do. You can be great at it. You can be. You can have been doing it for 17 years, but if you don't wake up in the morning and set your intentions, it can get away from you pretty quick. Yep, it's humbling. It is humbling. It's life is so humbling all the time. Um, and so I think that. I think that that's mainly when I look at trade hounds. When I look at trade hounds, that's what I see. I see this place where you guys are fostering that community where, where the young learn from the people who've been doing it. Um, and it sounds to me like it's a great opportunity, like I said, for people who've been doing it for a while to have that mentoring. Not, not everybody who's been an, an electrician or a tradesperson for, tw for 20 years. I've met, I've met quite a few, and I know you have too, 20-year apprentices that they just never went through the process of like getting their licenses or whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't know that a lot of them get – the opportunities to reach across the table and be a mentor and say and offer suggestions. Well, maybe try this. And um, creating a platform where they have that opportunity is pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think it goes back to our guiding principle. Like when we're going through product development or kind of roadmaps and plans for like the future of trade hounds, the guiding principle is like, how do we help the hounds is essentially what we look for. Because if it's not helping them, okay. at the end of the day, it's it's not worth it for our community. What sort of things are you guys? Can you talk about that kind of stuff? What things are you're you're thinking about and working on? What's what things you see in the in that in the industry that you know with what you've been doing that you might change might help grow what you're doing? Yeah, so we do a lot of outreach um, from our community manager Frankie um, and, and Rob. They do a great job of reaching out to our community to hear from them. Because again, like we want to make sure that the features in, in the product roadmap answers questions and, and fills needs for the community. So stuff that we're working on right now actually is uh, a map feature, which is something that the, the community has asked for. We're super excited about it um, with different points of interest. And, and that's going to trade, I mean, change on, on, on different trades and different users, but where we're starting off is supply houses and uh, taking it a step okay. further for local supply houses because a lot of the newer users, uh, we have, I think 81% of our users are under the age of 41. They might not have these established okay. relationships with the supply houses. We want to be able to say, hey, here's a local supply house that's gonna have everything that you need specific to your trade and then be able to mm -hmm. connect the two from there. So, okay. so it's kind yeah. of a living map of trade of, of supply houses around the country. 
Exactly. It's still in the very, very early, early stages right now uh, of beta testing. But essentially, you know, we're having users self-report yeah. their their favorite supply houses so we can get them connected and then looking to kind of expand into 2023 to go nationwide. But um, from there, you know, there's a bunch of different places that we can go in, in terms of points of interest. Um, we talked about doing like a inter-trade marketplace where it's like, oh, you know, Doug has mm. some wire cutters that he's looking to get rid of. Who can, who's in the area who might be? Not likely. Person? No way, man. No way. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. But, but a lot of these people, <laughs> um, as they start to exit, you know, the, the trades and go into retirement, like, there's an opportunity for them to give back to a community. Be like, hey, like, I have all these tools that I, I may no longer yeah. need. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it, like, within the community, basically. Sure. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's Do you guys we'll find on. that? Okay. What trade? Uh, what trade do you find is most? This is most geared toward. Do you have one? Is it carpenters? Is it plumbers, electricians that utilize this more than any other? Yeah, um, we actually have the majority of our users on the community are our electricians, and that definitely has to do oh, okay. with our partnership with Klein. We, we've been working with them for um, a year okay. now. So I think that's why we have the majority of electricians. Um, but we also see you know, carpenters, welders, HVAC technicians, um, just general contractors as well. But there's 50 selectable trades for when you join the community. So you can do yeah. commercial diver. You can do right. um, arborist. It gets pretty granular. Well, commercial so, diver. Yeah. Huh. Saw them last week in Boston. I was sick. I, I wish I had heard about that whole <laughs> Wish I'd have heard about that whole commercial diver thing before I jumped into this electrical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think water and electricity commercial diver and go too well together. <laughs> yeah, they, they're a bummer. It's a bummer. <laughs> we do a lot of exterior electrical work, and it's always a bummer. And it, I feel like in that instance, anytime we have a an instance where <laughs> where water and electricity don't don't mix, GFI's trip, whatever the case may be, your your initial feeling is to just say i mean it's it's outside electrical so it's well, just gonna trip the, the problem is really is that they they mix too well mm. that you know water conducts electricity mm -hmm. right they the want they want to be friends but they're just like they're like really bad influences that's a great other. point yeah water and electricity yeah. hit each other in a they just want they just want to party they do want to party they want to kill all kinds of people <laughs> Water's like, come hang out over here, man. You can zap like 50 of these people at one time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Water is effectively trade hounds for electricity. <laughs> <laughs> it helps spread that message, right? Yeah, that's a good, you know, full circle. Man. So what do you guys, what do you see? That's right, full circle. Where, where do you guys see this going? I mean, is this, as you grow, I mean, because I'm, I'm completely unfamiliar with this world, so like, you build an app, and within this app, there's all of this interaction going on. Um, what else? What else is there when you're working for a company that's primarily housed inside an app? What else do you guys work on? Yeah, I think um, I'm still learning. To be honest, to go back to the the analogy of a right. lobster, this is my first time in the app space. This is my first time in the startup space. So it changes day to okay. day. It changes week to week. It changes month to month. But the primary driver is really okay. just the community. So it's like, what do you, what do you, what do you want? What, what's the best way that we can serve you? And like where we start off is, you know, uh, we start off actually with marketplace, and then we realized, you know, there's yeah. like a bigger need for for maps and points of interest because a lot of these uh, supply houses aren't on like the big search networks. It's, they're just really hard to find. They're, they're not tech savvy, whatever it is. We can help out with that. And, and it's becoming a pay to play arena coming from my digital marketing okay. background. You know, some of these, these big yeah. retailers are able to outbid search terms. So when you're looking for supply houses, you're going to get, you know, the big box stores that, that pop up and, and it kind of like boxes yeah. out the local guys. Um, so it really, mm -hmm. it just comes down to what our community is, and it's something that I'm learning every day, honestly. Yeah. Sounds pretty punk rock. 
it does is like subvert, you know, subversive. You're, it's it's <laughs> it's the uh, and you said that your you know your demo's like forty one and under, and um, that's interesting too because that's really our demographic as well when mm-hmm. it comes to the podcast. It's like to you know that twenty five to thirty five market is is all over it as far as like being able to be tech savvy enough to get into right. an app, want to pick another one up. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Well, it's, it's awesome that you guys are doing this too, because I think for a long time, like this just entire technology standpoint has been overlooked maybe in, in trades. Like there hasn't been a, yeah. a resource like this in the past. So like, I love what you guys are doing. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank well, you. you know, we see it all the time because uh, I feel like typically people get into the trades because they don't like that sort of stuff. Um, they don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But, you know, there is a level of like you want to just be in your work and you just want to lose yourself in the project and what you're, you know, you love tools. You love taking things apart and putting them back together. And, and, a lot, and a lot of times, I think, especially when you talk to the older guys, it's just the technology just, just kind of gums up the work. So they just like, are like, like my dad is an old uh, trade, trade head and he's a, he works on cars. And uh, he, this guy could take old cars apart and build one beautiful new restored car, but he, he w- wants to throw his phone in the water every time. He doesn't know how to text. It's like it's just this – there's this cultural divide from the old heads to the new <clears throat> of like I don't – you know, I, I don't know about you. Aside, I guess aside from the last company you worked for before we started this company, every other company you worked for probably did everything paper-wise, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah. And I think what happens is people tend to think, all right, well, guys in the trades are a little old school and they don't like technology, but then that kind of polarizes things, right? So mm-hmm. it's like we're trying to make we're, – we're on this mission to make culture where it's like – it make trade work appealing to people who maybe have looked at it a certain way and thought, ah, it's either too crude for me or, you know, there's no there's no place for technology in it. It's like there needs to be a meshing of old and new school. You know, it's like keep, keep some of the traditions but also yeah. upgrade it, you know. And, uh, yeah, like fine. keep the hazing, you know what I mean? Keep the hazing <laughs> in there. Uh, but, you know, some tech, not some, maybe a new app every once. <laughs> you guys working on a new hazing app? Haze hounds, haze hounds. Haze hounds. <laughs> what, what do you guys have to do for, for your hazing? I'm, I'm really curious now. Oh, okay. That's funny. I mean, there really, for me, there wasn't any hazing. Yeah. But what's interesting is what we did for our apprentice, Daniel. Uh, was perceived as hazing when in reality it's um, it's hard work, you know. Um, <laughs> so hazing for most young people when they come into the trades is you're like, it's it's just the hard work. You're like, yeah. oh, I didn't. I had one guy ask me, we were just doing what we normally do, and one weekend he goes, is this what we do every day? And it's like, yeah, this is the job. You know, it's hard work. And so I think, I mean, before I got into electrical, I was working at Starbucks. And um, that's great. They take great care of their employees. Yeah. That's a big big part of their company model. But I was in the air conditioning. I got free drinks. and um, Soft hands. Real soft. And it, real was soft a, hands. it was a big <laughs> shift for me to go into swinging a hammer and um, yeah, all that. You know? So there wasn't yeah. actually much hazing. But the, the, the guys are – I mean some of them are rough around the edges and um, – they're not there to make friends, and most of them weren't there to train you either. You know, a lot of those old school dudes, they just want to work and be done with it. You know, they're annoyed that you want to learn this stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you can find a guy who wants to teach, you latch on to him. Um, that's, I mean, that's what's great about the, the trades hounds thing is maybe you get someone who isn't in an environment where they want to teach you. This kind of brings that to them. So yeah. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's very, really important very... to have that, like – that relationship, yeah. 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 I was just going to say, are there any other, like, resources out there for, like, learning, I guess? If you're not on the site and, you know, you got the grumpy grumpy old guy who doesn't want to help out, yeah. like, what do you turn to? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, look at look at what uh, our friend Dustin Stelzer over at Electrician yeah. U. Like, look at what Dustin's building over there. And, and um, 
you know, if you don't follow uh, him or Utah electrician Chad, Chad German, who's now going to be teaching with Dustin and, um, you know, Mike Holt and everything that Mike Holt's team has done to provide those of us in the electrical trade with text material to prepare for exams, to understand theory better. Mike's even got entire textbooks on um, estimating and, and bidding and you know, if you're running your own company. So yeah. there have been, a, the, cool. I would say, in the last, starting with Mike Holt, largely, I mean, after we had a conversation with him yeah. on this show, and it was really apparent through his story that when he was coming up in the trades, which was 40 years ago, maybe, mm -hmm. what's he, 70 now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe even before then. But he just, there were just no resources. There wasn't even, yeah. there weren't even textbooks that were super accessible for you to, like, really learn it. You really had to learn from somebody. And so... Yeah. Nowadays, that's very different. Like, you don't have to take the traditional route. You don't have to go to a, a you know trade school necessarily, depending on what the rules are in your area. Yeah. Um, so I would say if you're looking for a good mentor and you're okay with that virtual back and forth instead of the real hard person-to-person, -person, check out Electrician U um, because Dustin has a lot of videos that are really, really not just he gets into theory and everything, but... He has those real hands-on videos, too, where it's like yeah. he's explaining conduit bending and how, when you're troubleshooting what to look for. And th those are like – those are the things that a good teacher, if you were in the field with a with a master or a journey, journeyman that had that mentality that they wanted to teach you, those are the things you'd be picking up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, I, I would encourage people to – you don't want them to jump around a bunch, but – Ideally, if you can find a company, you know, if you're not at one that does support you in that way, you know, you should probably be considering making a jump because there are. We have a friend who runs an HVAC co company, and um, they're very forward thinking. They're focusing on training and and schooling, and so it's like there's more and more of those companies out there. And I think by finding them and supporting them, it's like support, supporting small business. It's like yeah. they're more likely to thrive yeah. and become the norm. And, um, you know, it's, it's just like any market. It's like if you don't – just don't support the stuff that doesn't work. That's right. You know? And I think in a lot of cases, young people don't know that, like, if you're working for – if you, especially if you came up and you feel like I'm going to jump in the trade and maybe you have that mentality that, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hazed <laughs> and then you go into it. And then that happens. You might not realize that there's an alternative. Just like being in an abusive relationship where you don't know. Like sometimes you're just like, well, I didn't realize that that was even happening until you go to another place and you're like, oh, they actually, they, they actually, they're nice. They or they or not just that, but they're like supportive and encouraging. And they just yeah. instead of telling me everything I did wrong right there, they helped me see the things I did wrong. But they offered suggestions for doing it, doing it better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's fantastic here that there are other resources out there. I'm just not, you know, an electrician. I'm a, I'm a sales guy, so I, I, sure. couldn't, I couldn't figure this out if, if you gave me a million years. So major props to you, sure you and can. the listeners. But I think Trade House listen, does do a listen. good job of, like, you know, providing that space where it's like, hey, look, like, I'm yeah. looking for technical help here. Do you mind, like, taking a look? And, and it's, been, it's been cool right. to have, like, that casual side of it without going through like a textbook or basically providing someone mm -hmm. with like a friendly master who's going to help them out mm -hmm. virtually. Yeah. That's awesome. And I feel like that's, you know, we talk about social media a lot, Josh and I, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's pros and cons, but the biggest takeaway that, and, and honestly, the thing that has surprised us more than anything with social media is the positive feedback. Like there is a, whether it's trade hounds or it's, you're looking at some other platform, there, I've been I've been blown away with how you can go on there and find people who want you to succeed too. And you you know it's not yeah. just this competitive hoarding of hoarding of your technique and ideas. It's like it's that information's out there, and, and it's I, I love the idea of sharing a trick that you learned or some way to make some way to make a project easier. You know. Yeah. Faith in humanity restored. <laughs> you guys are doing it. You're starting with trade hounds, restoring faith in humanity. That's fine. We're trying. Yeah. Now, now, if we could just get trade hounds and J.P. Canfield to run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if we could do that, man. i got too much dirt on me. <laughs>
I don't know, man. With that lobster story, you might. You're a shoe in dude. <laughs> that, you just go city to city with the lobster story. That job literally slammed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. It was That's crazy. right. Did it really? How long did you did you catch lobsters? I did it for a summer. Uh, I was at college and just needed a job. And I was like, I'm going to give it a go. And I was a yeah. Stearnsman. And uh, we, we pulled four, 400 traps a day. The captain Whoa. would, you know, pull the buoy, bring the traps on, take the lobsters out, put them in their cubby. And then my job hmm. was to uh, remove the bait bag with all the stinking rotting fish, put in new stinking rotting fish out of these <laughs> gallon drums that we left sitting in the yeah. sun all day. I'm putting my entire body into them. Put them in the bait bag, stack them 15 at the back, and then he'd push off uh, the, the first one, and they'd kind of shoot out, which was crazy. And then I'd go and ban the lobsters, and then we'd do it all over again. Sounds like fun. See? And in my industry, we call that hazing. <laughs> But really, exactly, it's just exactly. it's just the job. <laughs> and, and you're right, though, Josh. Like that is becoming a thing. Like it's okay. So, and that's something to talk about. Like it is more and more so. The newer the newer generation <laughs> does kind of like when we brought on our apprentice, and we've talked about this before on the show. One of the first things we had him do when we did a service upgrade was drive an eight an eight foot galvanized ground rod into the earth, and we do that. We've got tools that do that. Um, but we did it with we also do it with a mini sledgehammer. Sure. And um, it's just good practice. It keeps you fit. But we do it all the time. And we you know you, it's great to have those tools. It's great to use those tools when you have them and and rely on them. But sometimes, what if you're in a situation where you don't have that tool? You got to know you can get it done. And when we first had him do it, we joked with him like, "You probably think this is hazing," and he's like, "It's not." It's not hazing. <laughs> and uh, we, it's because when you're doing that for the first time, you might not realize that the people who are asking you to do it have actually done it right, 1,000 times. times. Right. And you, you've you got that mini sledge in your hand, and you're like, this is bullshit. Like, why, <laughs> why am I – why don't they do this? And it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I've done this so many times. Like, right we're not doing this to hurt you. So, and and it, yeah. yeah, and you've got to know it's not just a mental break, or it's not yeah. just a physical break. It's a mental break. You got to know, oh, okay, when push comes to shove, I can get that done. It's yeah. funny too. Yeah, like, but that's that's a good distinction to make. It's like it's not hazing; it's a rite of passage. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah I was just gonna those say can, it's, those can get mixed up sometimes. That's a know? T-shirt right there. Yeah, it's funny because my my buddy yeah. works for Thank Amtrak, you. and um, when he first joined at Amtrak, they had him manually like doing the the railroad ties. And they have a machine that does it. But same type of thing. It was like, well, you know, if this machine isn't working, you got to get these done. Like, you got to know how to do this. And he's complains like, oh, my, back was, my back was killing me, man. It sucked. But it was yeah. good to know. Like, you need to know that stuff. It's also it's also great for um, appreciation and gratitude because like you do it the hand by hand all this time and then yeah. you get the tool and you're like oh my god this tool's amazing it's it's so great if you start with the tool you're like whatever it's just part of the job so you almost don't have that appreciation for a hot shower unless you've taken a cold mountain shower you know it's like you know it's true um, the, the amount of things we take for granted technologically wise you know in our industry. It's a big deal. So what tool do you guys appreciate the most then? It's a good question. Well, heavy hidden questions. Um, that's a good one. You know, I mean, I never had to use an old school hand auger drill. Mm. Um, but I have to say, given the fact that I've had a corded or electric drill all the time, I'm still grateful for it because we work in an old town, and you see you see the holes that were hand drilled, and you know some 18 year old guy was getting his rite of passage that day, <laughs> and that was his whole job was to go around the house hand drilling the house. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's probably my biggest one is is cordless drills. Yeah, well, cordless maybe drills. I just an picked up the uh, for you to try that hand drill, and then you appreciate it even more. <laughs> I've got I've got some of my my uh, my wife. Her grandfather had a handful of them, and I've got them sitting in my shop. I've thought about it. We should make a video of yeah, how hard I mean, life would be. Now. How hard life would be if we didn't have these new tools. A little bit of appreciation. I'm gonna dress up like they would have dressed back then. There you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, drills are probably it. I just picked up the. 
That's right. That's a great idea. Yeah, what are we thankful dude. for? All right. That's why I see. I was a marketing Mr. Guy. Marketing over there. That's why we talked to JP. Exactly. That's, right. that's what it is. You're coming to Lumber Brothers next. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, those drills are good. I just picked up the M18 um, hammer drill, the uh, SDS Plus, and uh, it's just a it's a masonry penetrating hammer drill, and it's cordless, battery powered. Man, change your life. Change your life. A, a child could use it, but, oh. should, but shouldn't. <laughs> we just talked about it recently with um, our, our buddy, but uh, the Makita drywall saw. Drywall saw. Makita drywall saw. That tool is a game changer. We cut so much drywall doing residential electrical work, and there's a lot of ways to do it, but Makita made this little tool. Yeah. In, it, it's in, amazing. In fact, yeah, I don't even think about it. Like, but in the residential game specifically – any trades out there that have to cut holes in drywall, the Makita drywall cutting tool, incredible. It's got a little adjustable blade that you can dial into the depth of just your drywall so you're not, you're not worried about cutting wires behind the drywall or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's got a vacuum attachment to it so while you're cutting drywall, it's sucking the dust out so you're not shooting a plume of dust all over the client's house. Yep. It's professional. It's clean. Can't can't say enough good things about that tool. Yep. So that's probably probably the one. That's the one that I have done it the hand way my whole mm -hmm. career, mm. and now I have a tool to make it easier. Yeah. So but I do want to get back to, like, this this concept of, like, because I think it is important to, to stress with young, with the people first getting into anything, not just the trade, you have to, you have to know, any young people out there listening, listen, when you first start something, you're gonna shovel the shit. <laughs> it is what it is. Like it's in the people who who are asking you to do that or telling you to do that, they did that too. They're not saying that to you for any reason other than that's the lowest skill level job. And you got and, and it has to get done. And so it's not personal. I you see a lot of this like, you know, frustrated or like this is bullshit and people that don't make it they start out in the trades and they don't make it more than two weeks because they're like this is ridiculous all i'm doing is it's like look it gets better but you have to start where you are and and just because you're being asked to do something like diving into old fish guts <laughs> it's just because the captain's not going to do that he, that's he needs somebody who doesn't have any other skills yet yeah i'm and offended you I, can, had, I had well it, oh my gosh well, I'm, not talk, I'm not talking about you know your <laughs> JP being the exception. I'm not talking about yes. your marketing skills. Here. I'm talking yes. about your ability to get on a ship and grab lobsters out of the ocean. Like yes. somebody's got to dive in that bucket of fish guts, and it's not going to be the captain. And so, no. I just want to say that because there is there. You know, it's like I talked to my I have a, I have a daughter who's 22, and I don't want to sound like a totally old man, but I will on <laughs> purpose. Yeah. Uh, but we're always. She always talks about that. She's like, "Well, oh, you know, they, these jobs need to pay people more." Blah, blah, blah. And then, look, there's that's all debatable. But like, at the same in the same breath, they don't want to get in there and and pull out a bunch of fish guts. And it's like, what do you want me to do? Like, you you want to get paid manager pay without any skills? It, it you have yeah. to start where you are, and sometimes it's hard, but you'll get through that. I think in in my experience too, it's it's a bit about attitude. That's been the biggest thing. And if you're yeah. if you're sitting there after two weeks like, I hate this, I don't want to do this, like, then you're probably not going to last. But if you're like, man, I appreciate the grind here and, like, are verbal about that, a lot of the times the people who are hazing you, that kind of works in the reverse where they're like, all right, well, I, I think they're starting to learn, they're appreciating it, and it, and it, and it works when you just change your, your mindset. I think you guys talk about that a lot, too. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, I talked. I was talking with uh, our apprentice Daniel last week, and I said, "Have you ever seen, you know, the Karate Kid, either the original or the remake?" Right? There's this great lesson in there. The whole wax on, wax off thing. It's like here, this whole time he's being trained, and he doesn't realize that what he's being asked to do, which is just, you know, the the regular daily work, you know, the ch chop wood, carry water, that it's going to translate to what he does later. I said that there's a prime that happens a lot in the trades, like with us. I said I'm going to start having you clean up, clean my truck out, and if you don't have the right attitude, it's going to seem like I'm just essentially getting you to do 
free work for me, busy work for me, but that's not the case. What you're going to learn, because it took me a long time, I worked for all these different companies, and you always clean the trucks out. And the first master that I worked for had me cleaning the truck out in his driveway for hours every day, and it drove me crazy. But then I started to get a little more hands-on. I knew what all the materials were. I knew where they were on the truck. And then later on, when I was running my own van, I already had the management skills and the mindset of cleaning the truck. And it's like I didn't realize in that moment that he was essentially teaching me wax on, wax off. He miyagi like, you. Yeah, <laughs> you got miyagi. Totally, dude. And it's like so, like the menial, like that that little, the lowest rung job that they ask you to do. It's important in more ways. It, it has to get done, which is yeah. the bare bones. But also, it translates to where you are later in your career. You know, the captain. You know, if he's got to have you do the fish guts, it's like it's because he knows how long it takes and how many people you need to do it. And it's like so. Doing it, even as you move up the ladder, by starting there, you know everything that goes into it, yeah. and it's um, there's a lot to it. I it's think cool. you made a good point too. Of like, so obviously there is an end game to it, but being upfront about that to be like, I'm having you do this so you can do this in the future is really important to help change yeah. that mindset too. Which I don't think always happens where you're just like, yeah. you're just out to get yeah. me. But if you, I think you're right. I'm doing this for you. This is why. And then it's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny how a little bit of communication can make all the difference, right? Instead of just saying, hey, you, get back there and clean, <laughs> clean my truck. Because that can feel like, well, damn, what did I do to this person? Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, I need you to clean this out and here's why. Because yeah. you, it's going to teach you this and this. Yeah. Um, but you're right, JP. It is, it is also a mindset. It is like, I think that if you're going to if you're gonna get yourself into a trade, Know that it's not easy. Know, know that it's not you're you're not going to start with the easy stuff. It's going to be lot labor and labor heavy, and just know that the people who are asking you to do that did that too. They're they're there where they are because they once upon a time had soft hands too. <laughs> got got tight notes. Got toughen them hands up. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I think communication is also important, like you said. Do you know who? Uh, do you know who Jocko is? Jocko Willink. I didn't. He wrote a great book. He, he's a Navy SEAL, but he he's got a podcast now. He wrote a great book um, called Extreme Ownership. Extreme Ownership, yeah. And it's basically about taking personal responsibility for stuff and whatnot. And he talks about in managerial roles, one of the most important things you can do, being honest and upfront with your guys, is that. Explain to them what's going on, yeah. even in the hard times and the bad times. He says because if you don't give them the narrative, they'll make their own. Yeah. And so it's like if you're not explaining to your people why you're training them a certain way or why we're why we're doing something, they're going to come up with their own theory in their head, which is that you know you're using them or you right. know, you're taking all the money and s piling it up in your bedroom and it's like <laughs> you know and just swan diving into it like Scrooge Duck. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like you know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's it's so important to explain to people, yeah. you know, what's going on. So it sounds like that's what you guys are doing over there at uh, at Trade Hounds is just developing that platform to have those conversations. Transparency. Yeah. Exactly. And it sounds like you guys are doing it too. We're working on it, man. It's trying. A, yeah, trying. Just learning as we go too, and. You know, we still, just like everything, we, we're looking to, like Josh said, the Jocko Willinks and any other leader that we see out there. I'm a big fan of this guy named Jason Wilson, who um, he's a mentor and a, a martial arts instructor for inner city youth. And his whole take is that, like, you know, it's all about the, the parents' role in the life. It's all about overcoming Difficulty. He had this great video recently where it's, it was this awesome video. He showed this flashback three years ago to where he's teaching his son how to how to throw strikes, how to punch, and he's got his his like punching mitts up, and he's got like a GoPro, so you can see the son, and the son starts to get frustrated, and uh, he he can't get his feet footing right, and he starts to cry. And his, Jason Wilson's platform is a lot about crying as man and like being okay with your emotions. He has a book called Cry Like a Man. And he, this video is wonderful because his son starts to get frustrated and he starts to cry. And Jason's like, why are you crying? And he tells him, I can't, I'm not getting it right. And he's like, son, that's why we practice. You know, it's, you, you can't get it right right away. You've got you to gotta go through these times. You've got to get frustrated. You gotta, and then it cuts 
to three years later, and now his son is a preteen, and that kid is lighting those mitts up with all these different combinations. So just three quick years after that frustrated moment where he felt like quitting, and this kid is a new changed person, and it's all because his dad was there for him to let yeah. him feel that, talk him through it, and say, now get back on these pads and throw another punch. Yep. Makes sense, yeah. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, man. That's what we say. A little girl down the street would do it. We always. <laughs> Josh had a guy. Josh had a guy used to tell him. What? I, I worked with. I, I was working on this big project. This really cool high end project, and there was this like really quiet uh, general carpenter, ca- like a uh, cabinet guy there. And he never really said much, but one day I I don't normally let frustrations get to me, but it was just getting to me, and I kind of threw my hands down. I was very frustrated, and he just looks at me and goes. Well, if it was easy, the little girl down the street could do it. <laughs> and I was like, huh. So now we, we always joke that the little girl down the street is like this like business She's got savvy like miser who's just like coming after Lumen Brothers. <laughs> little girl down the street electric. <laughs> yeah. Look out for her. She <laughs> is just brutal. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. So. Well, JP, man, we, we really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and talk about Trade Hounds. We think what you guys are doing over there is, is just you know phenomenal, awesome. Yeah. So keep it up. And uh, what what else? Is there anything else we can say to, to promote what you guys are doing? No, I was just going to say thank you so much for having us. Uh, we uh, I'm glad we got to connect down in Austin. And it sounds like, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead and Hell download much. the app on the, the Google Store and the Apple Store. Free to download. Connect with me, JP, at Tradehound. Shoot me a message. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. We're trying to grow um, as a community. So any feedback is really appreciated. So, Appreciate you guys, and thanks for having me on the show. Thanks so much, JP. Thanks, man. Have a great day, brother. Later. Cool.